This video will show you how to realize a UDV 2D measurement. As an example, we have chosen a step in a water channel. We will measure the velocity profile just after the step. Both components, the vertical one and the horizontal one, will be measured. The way the transducers are arranged and the type of transducers comes from the simulation software. Be sure that no air bubbles are attached to the transducers. Now let's define the parameters in UDOP software. Let's start UDOP software. As for any new measurement, we will get the default parameters. Then you will go into the UDV 2D 3D simulation software in order to know how to use the probe, which probe to select and how to arrange the probes. We will define now the velocity field and depth range. We would like to measure from 20 mm up to 90 mm, so enter 90. Then we will define the velocity field. Let's enter 200 mm per second for the velocities of particle for both position 1 and 2. As the velocity component along the vertical axis is too low, let's move the source of particles a little bit closer to the BS beam axis of the emitter. Now the velocity seems to be correct, so let's accept it. Let's have a look on the probe panel. In this panel you define how the probe are arranged. Let's keep for the moment the default values. So everything is ready for doing a simulation, let's do it. As you may see, the red curve and the blue curve are good agreement, so we can have a look on the velocities. Again, good agreement between the theoreticals and measured value. We can exit the simulation now and keep the values of the parameters in order to keep these values for the real measurements. What you see now are the Doppler frequencies issue from both receivers. Let's have a look on the operating parameters. The simulating software works with a fixed resolution. We will improve it to 0.250 mm. Changing the resolution changes the maximum measuring depth. In order to recover the original 90 mm, we will change the number of gate to 280. We will not change the other parameters and will keep their value for the moment. Let's have a look on the eco profile. The eco profiles allows us to be sure that no artifacts are present. In order to be sure of that, we'll use the search artifact tool. These tools allow us to change a little bit the PRF. First, we'll define the step to 20 Hz and then we'll change the PRF step by step and see the influence on the eco profile. As you may realize, for some specific value of the PRF, strong echoes appear in the eco profile. A good PRF value is a PRF for which small changes around its value do not imply any changes in the eco profile. It seems to us that the value of 568 is the good value, so we will keep that value. As we have correct eco profiles, we can have a look on the Doppler frequencies issue from both receivers. As they do not cover the full range, we will improve the Doppler frequency scales. Let's apply a value of 0.7 to both velocity scale factors. Such a value improves the quality of the results. We can also apply a filter on these profiles. And finally, have a look on the velocity profiles, which show us the vertical component and the axial component. UDOP can replace the velocity profile by vectors. In such a display, the velocity scale are specific to that display. We will improve the velocity scales. Also, we will display more vectors by skipping only three vectors. And finally, let's move a little bit the panels. In order to have a better idea of the turbulences, you can reduce the acquisition time. This can be done, for instance, by reducing the number of emissions per profile. Let's reduce it to 32 emissions. 
Now this is a typical display you can have with UDOP using the UDV2D mode. Thank you for watching this video.